archetype of the misunderstood creative genius, Vincent van Gogh led a passionate, manic and tortured life. In 10 short years, he impulsively churned out over 860 full canvas oil paintings, which, when rarely auctioned, sell for millions. Vincent chopped off his ear in a manic rage and was swiftly sent to an insane asylum, and his life was cut abruptly short when he shot himself in the chest at the tender age of 37. Vincent's life is a metaphor for the obsessive, no compromise stream of unchecked, creative peak experience that he ultimately sacrificed his mental and physical health for. However, after reading Irving Stone's Lust for Life, I'm convinced there's lessons to be taken from his staggering character that perhaps we could all adopt in a manageable and healthy way. Hey guys, how's it going? We've got a real cracker today, Vincent van Gogh. We're going to go through five lessons from Irving Stone's book, Lust for Life. I'll leave the timestamps here so you can jump around if you want. Let's get into it. So the first lesson that I took from this book is whatever your art is, do it for art's sake. And I'm gonna read a passage out of the book that exemplifies this point. And it's Vincent responding to his father when he comments on his drawings. You have to make your drawing right so the portraits will be good enough to sell. No, replied Vincent, sketching rapidly with his pencil. I have to make my drawings right so that my drawings will be right. Now, Vincent never actually saw the success of his work. While he might have dreamed that his art would hang in the Louvre one day, which it ultimately did, he died penniless, living off his brother, uh, had absolutely no success at all, but it did not affect the work ethic that he had when it came to his art. This may seem tragic, but for Vincent, the act of creation is enough. And I think this is just such a humbling principle to have. In an age that we live in with the internet where creating something is just so easy to do, to get something out there and, and put your energy into it, we still, I think, have this idea that something's not successful unless it's externally validated by someone else. And this is just not a concept that Vincent held in his mind. Perhaps we could all learn to channel a bit the indifference that Vincent felt towards external rewards. I mean, when was the last time that you wrote a poem for the sake of it, or did a drawing for the sake of it, or solved a math problem for the sake of it? Letting go of this mentality that doing work must result in some improvement of your position, whether that's you know financial or at work, is a really powerful concept to hold on to, so that we can just enjoy creation for creation's sake. The next lesson that I took from this book is to trust the process. And again, I'm gonna read out a passage between Vincent and his father. The pretext to this conversation is that basically his dad is not happy with the progress that Vincent's making. As we'll explore later, he was a, not really a natural when it came to art. And this was Vincent's reply to his lack of progress. Nature always begins by resisting the artist's father, he said without putting down his pencil. But if I really take my work seriously, I won't allow myself to be led astray by that resistance. On the contrary, it will be a stimulus the more to fight for victory. Vincent didn't actually start drawing till quite late on in his life. I mean, late from an artist's point of view. He was in his early 20s. And by this time, there was a huge technical gap between him and his peers. And I think this was also exasperated by the fact that he was quite a slow learner. He couldn't get basic shapes right. All of his proportions were out of whack and people would constantly criticize his work as being basically that of a child. Even though he was frequently mocked for not being able to draw in the correct proportions, he plowed on anyway. And his mentality was just like, look, Every artist has been through this stuck struggle. I'm just starting a little bit late. When we don't see results, it can be really tempting for us to think of ourselves as uh, stupid or not cut out for the work or talentless. And what Vincent shows us is that if we just have faith in the process of continuing to do work and continuing to learn and improve, even someone with apparently no skill for his trade can metamorph into a creative visionary. The third lesson I took from this book is to see the beauty in everything. And I'm just gonna read out a quote now, which is Vincent musing on beauty as a concept. Art is immoral, so is life. 
For me, there are no obscene pictures or books. There are only poorly conceived and poorly executed ones. A whore, by Toulouse Lautrec, is moral because he brings out the beauty that lies between her external appearance. A pure country girl, by Bugro, is immoral because she is sentimentalised and so cloyingly sweet that just to look at her is enough to make you vomit. Vincent saw the beauty in prostitution, ugly women, barren landscapes. He didn't judge anything as good or bad. And while I think it's going to be difficult for any of us to melt our egos to this extreme, I think there is something to be said to just reframing what we might consider beautiful. It really does, I think, lead to um, a really cool outlook on life. The fourth lesson I took from this book is to embrace solitude. And I'm going to read out an extract from a letter that Vincent sent to his brother Theo, which these letters are actually the basis for what most of Vincent van Gogh's biographies are based on. I wonder if I can make you understand, but of course I can. When I was alone in the Brabant and the Hague, I thought of myself as an important person. I was the one lone man battling the whole world. I was an artist, the only artist living. Everything I painted was valuable. I knew that I had great ability and that eventually the world would say, he is a splendid painter. So most of Vincent's most creative phases of his life were actually when he was living in solitude. He'd pack up his things and go and stay in some budget inn somewhere and just spend days walking around with his canvas, painting whatever he saw. And in these times, he didn't have to worry about being distracted by others. Vincent was very influenced by the other artists at the time, um, Gorgon and some of the others, but he only really ever found his own artistic style when he was in solitude. Now, obviously in this day and age, finding solitude is actually something that's pretty difficult to do because we have these things. And I like to imagine that if Vincent was around today and he had a smartphone, he'd be stashing it away at every opportunity, just trying to get a bit of clarity and peace of mind. Solitude doesn't require a country house or to go on a, a fancy retreat. It just, I think, requires a mindset to say, I am gonna be on my own for a certain amount of time. I'm gonna disconnect from this world of connectivity and noise and just be with myself. And I think that this is a really powerful lesson that we can take from Van Gogh, that really the true moments of creativity come when we're on our own. The fifth and final lesson that I took from this book is a very simple one and I don't think requires much explanation. It's just a really nice quote that I found in the book. From out of pain, beauty. Vincent saw the power of using raw emotion to create really powerful art. Whether he was feeling anxious or depressed or ecstatic, he would never try and mask these emotions. He would express them fully and express them through his art. I mean, you can't look at one of his self-portraits without feeling absolutely everything that Vincent was putting into the art at the time looking into the eyes and seeing the depression, seeing the sort of solemn face of things. It really is incredible how he managed to channel these emotions in such an artistic and creative way. We have a tendency to label emotions in a binary, sort of positive, negative way. You know, it's good when I feel happy, it's bad when I feel sad, it's not good to feel depressed or angry or anxious. and. You know, while to a certain extent this is true and we obviously want to construct our lives around feeling more positive emotions, I think that it's a mistake to try and back away from them when these emotions do arise. It's just part of the human condition. You're never going to go through life and not get anxious or get depressed. And I think one really interesting thing that I've taken from this book is that try and view those things as, a, as an opportunity without sounding like a... Uh, Jocko Willink, um, you know, if you're feeling depressed, how can I channel this in a positive way? Maybe I could express my depression in a way that someone who else is depressed is going to find uh, reassuring or that they're not just on their own. Um, I think it's just a, it's an interesting way to look at things, to not think necessarily that an emotion is bad, but to just view it as the emotion as it is and think about how you can utilise it in the most effective way possible.
Vincent's lust for creation, his disregard for anything but his own internal drives and his ability to really march at the beat of his own drum led to him leading a life of unquestionable passion. Now this life was not a happy one clearly. While it was full of what we would now call peak experiences and flow states, he would go for days at a time where he would just you know, paint manically without eating or, or anything like that. It was a manic life and not something that we would want to imitate if we want to be happy, you know, leading a, a balanced life, I think, is, is probably one of the keys for maintaining a, a good level of, of mental well-being. Having said that, I think, you know, even though he's a complex character, there are definitely some really important lessons that we can take from him. And I hope that this video has just shown you a few of those. I'd highly recommend checking out the book. It's, it is really great and really gives you an incredible insight into the mind of someone who's incredibly mentally unwell. If you like the video, press subscribe. Every month I put out a video like this where I take five lessons from uh, someone that I consider to be an incredible character. And my other videos are more focused on productivity, entrepreneurship, simplicity, and just generally concepts to live a, a simpler life. Thanks a lot.